Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be describing about the differences in the mucosal and the squamosal type of chronic suppurative hepatitis media. Now, different terminologies are used for these two diseases. So, mucosal disease is also called tubotympanic disease, while squamosal is also called aticoventral. Tubotympanic is also called safe disease because the chances of complications are less. While in aticoventral, it is unsafe disease because of the because the chances of the complications are more because of the bone destruction. For similar reasons, tubotympanic is also called benign disease, while aticoventral is also called dangerous disease. So these are the different terms which are used for these two diseases. So we'll see what are the differences in these two diseases with, with respect to various points. So first is the discharge. Now in tubotympanic disease, the discharge is profuse. Profuse means the discharge comes out from the uh, canal and external artery meatus. It is mucoid. Mucoid, we can know that it is mucoid when the uh, discharge is sticky and it forms a string of pearls appearance on stretching. Then it is generally orderless and it is intermittent. Intermittent means that when the patient takes medication, the discharge is relieved. While in aticoventral disease, the discharge is scanty. So when the patient or the examiner cleans the ear with the earbud, only the bud uh, gets stained. Otherwise, the discharge is not present in the canal or uh, neither does it come out of the meatus. Then it is purulent. Uh, that is, it is the mucoid discharge is uh, infected and pus is there. It is foul smelling. Now the discharge in aticoventral is foul smelling because of the bony necrosis. The enzymatic destruction of the bone causes a necrosis of the bone which causes foul smell. And the discharge is continuous. So those scanty in aticoventral, the discharge is continuous. That, that is, it is not relieved uh, by medication. Now perforation, regarding perforation, the perforation of the tubotympanic disease is always central. Central means it is surrounded by the remnants of the tympanic membrane from all sides. While in aticoventral, the perforation can be either atic, atic means present in the pars flaccida or in the atic region or marginal. Marginal means that uh, some of the margins of the perforation are is, is formed by annulus. So this is called marginal and these two perforations that is attic and marginal they have more chance of invasion of epithelium and uh, formation of cholesteratoma that is why they are called unsafe then granulations granulations generally are not seen with tubotympanic disease but they are commonly seen in uh, aticoventral disease and these granulations they can be present in the attic region or they can also be present in the posterior superior quadrant region then polyp. Polyp of tubotympanic disease, they are generally pale and they come from the middle ear through the perforation. While the polyps of aticoventral disease, they are red and flashy. That means they have vascularity and that is also one of the reasons that in aticoventral disease, sometimes the discharge is blood stained because of these uh, vascular granulations as well as these polyps. Then cholesteratoma, it is never a feature of tubotympanic disease. Cholesteratoma is present in aticoventral disease. So cholesteratoma is the presence of uh, stratified squamous keratinized epithelium in the middle ear cleft. That is called cholesteratoma. Uh, it is a feature of aticoventral disease. Complications. Uh, they can be seen in tubotympanic disease, but they are very rare because there is less bone destruction. While in aticoventral disease, the intra and the extra cranial complications they are more commonly seen because of the bony destruction the hearing loss which is shown in audiogram it is generally of mild to moderate degree and of conductive variety in tubotympanic disease because the bony necrosis or the necrosis of the ossicles is also very less in this disease while in aticoventral disease there is more destruction of the ossicles which leads to conductive loss but of somewhat higher degree than the tubotympanic disease and sometimes it can also be uh, mixed hearing loss. There can be some sensory neural component because of the uh, 
diffusion of the toxins in the inner ear or direct involvement of the inner ear with cholesteatoma. Then bleeding from the ear, very rarely in tubo tympanic, almost never, but in etiquental, as I told you, because of these granulations and uh, red and fleshy polyps, sometimes the discharge is accompanied by blood, so patients complain of blood stained ear discharge in etiquental disease. Now, when we uh, uh, see the X-ray of uh, patients with CSON, X-ray mastoid, that is Schuller's view, in tubo tympanic, the X-ray can be either cellular, that is pneumatic air cells can be present, or it can be sclerotic also. While in etiquental disease, uh, generally pneumatic mastoid is not seen. Most of the times, it is uh, sclerotic, along with destruction of the bone. So, bony destruction is a feature of etiquental disease, which can be seen on uh, x-ray and the, it is better appreciated on HRCT temporal bone. Then regarding the treatment, so first uh, thing is to treat the causative factor like enlarged tonsils or adenoids or deviated nasal septums and then to repair the middle ear if only tympanic membrane needs to be repaired it is myringoplasty while if ossicles also require repair, then it is tympanoplasty. So either myringoplasty or tympanoplasty is the surgery of choice for tubotympanic pathology. While in etiquental pathology, it can be it, it has to be mastoid surgery, either in the form of radical mastoidectomy or modified radical mastoidectomy, depending upon the extent of the uh, spread of the disease. So in etiquental disease, mastoid surgery, either radical or modified radical, is the treatment of choice. Thank you.